I'm a woman who worked in the GMB union. I worked there for about 10 years and I reported directly to Gary Smith, the general secretary. In 2020, the union had a report called the Karen Monaghan Report which detailed how the organization was institutionally sexist and that there was a culture of bullying and misogyny. One of the recommendations of the Karen Monaghan report was the introduction of a new sexual harassment policy implemented in May 2022, the same day that I lodged my sexual harassment complaint. My sexual harassment complaint was therefore the first sexual harassment complaint to be lodged under the new policy, and this is what happened to me. My sex harassment case was formally lodged on 30th of May 2022. Following that, I was victimised by being removed from the workplace based on unsubstantiated vexation complaints by my perpetrator. Following my removal from the workplace, I was then written to by the union's head of HR, Emma Johnson, and told that the union was refusing to even hear my sex harassment claim. They then allowed my perpetrator back into the workplace. In July, I launched an appeal and they again doubled down and said that they were refusing to hear it. In August, I launched an appeal at ACAS and in September, I launched an employment tribunal case. It was only after I launched an ET case that the union finally suspended my perpetrator as he was facing a separate process for another issue of gross misconduct. On October 26th, 2022, I was phoned up by a friend who had in turn been phoned up by the General Secretary Gary Smith, who had told her to relay a message to me to tell me that if I didn't withdraw my employment tribunal case, by the end of the day, he would open a process on me. As a result, I went off sick with stress and anxiety. I received a threatening legal letter from GMB solicitors saying that issues had come to light within my place of work and that there would have to be extensive investigations into my conduct. Then on the 6th of December 2022, I was told I had to attend a meeting with the General Secretary, another man on the senior management team, and I could bring my friend with me. This meeting wasn't held on a GMB premises. Instead, the General Secretary hired a hotel basement room, and that's where the meeting took place. At this meeting, the General Secretary said we were at a heightened state of industrial relations against the Tory government, and that my employment tribunal case could potentially endanger the whole trade union movement. He also tried to frighten me by telling me that secret services were probably following me around and keeping a close eye on me. I was still on sick leave with stress and anxiety when this meeting took place. There was no HR in the room. After that, on the 22nd of December, I was in a taxi from the airport to join my family for Christmas when my friend phoned me up in a panic because Gary Smith, the General Secretary, had phoned her, screaming at her to tell me that if I didn't sign a settlement agreement for my employment tribunal case with a wide-ranging gagging clause applied to me by 9.30 a.m. the next morning, he would have me sacked and he swore on his own mother's life that he would do that. His mother was actually in hospital at the time, I believe. I was so frightened and traumatised that I signed it. I hoped that I would then be allowed to go back to work. In January 2023, I was told I couldn't return to work until I had a return to work meeting. My return to work meeting was not held in a GMB premises and there was no HR present. Instead, the General Secretary hired a hotel room in Newcastle and brought a solicitor with him from a firm called Patterson and Brewer. That solicitor is now our head of legal, but is still a partner at Patterson and Brewer. I was allowed to bring my friend with me. During that meeting, I was victim blamed and told that I had driven a wrecking ball through the organization because I had launched an employment tribunal case for sexual harassment. I was then told that all the women on the senior management team of the GMB wanted me sacked and didn't want anything to do with me. And I was told that the abuse that I had suffered was my own fault. 
I was then also told that I was not going to be allowed to go back to my substantial role in the organisation, and that instead I would have to work directly for Gary Smith at National Office. Following that meeting, I complained that any attempts to remove me from my substantive role would be a case of victimisation. I tried to return to work, but was not allowed. Instead, I was told I had to have a second return to work meeting. It was again, not held with any HR present, not held on a GMB premises, but instead the General Secretary made me attend a meeting again in a basement of a London hotel. At this meeting, it was just the General Secretary, my friend and myself present. During the meeting, I tried to raise the threatening letters I'd received while I was on sick leave, saying that I would have to face extensive investigations into my conduct. The General Secretary responded by saying, I seen somebody who was in a very, very bad place mentally. And I'm not being patronising, but I also see this one of the last eight times, and I know how destructive this whole thing has been for you. I was a victim of an abusive man, Gary. And I'm not the only victim of that abusive man, but I am also a victim of that abusive man. We're not going around the body about that because there was choices as well that you made and reactions and all the rest of the stuff that was talked about. I agree with you. You agree? I agree. I was a terrible victim of an abusive man. Yeah. Once you get into a fight with a big organisation, yeah, we're going to come with swinging, and we'll have better lawyers than you, and it'll be more expensive. That's just what happens. You put a gun on the table, people just start shooting back. You start shooting match, don't need to match once you pick a fight in the manner that we did. And there's a learning for you, don't get into that game. Because, yeah, everything then gets turned into something else. Gary Smith responded by saying that although he believed I had been the victim of an abusive man, that by lodging an employment tribunal claim for sexual harassment, I had put a gun on the table. And he then went on to tell me that everything then gets turned into something else. Which is what I believe is happening now in terms of the weaponization of cases and a process against me for having spoken out. I took this to mean that any complaint I would make would be dealt with that way and that he would always use these better, more expensive lawyers to silence me. I was, however, allowed to return to work after that. Some people might question why I would record a meeting, but I think it's important to note that this meeting was taking place in the basement of a London hotel. And when you've been bullied by the General Secretary into attending a second meeting without HR, not in your workplace, but in the basement of a London hotel, you legitimately might feel frightened and feel the need to record the abuse, because I knew and I know that it would have been denied otherwise. And the real question is why is the General Secretary of the GMB bullying women into meetings in basements? Then in February, I received a phone call from the General Secretary complaining about a tweet I had done about the issue of sexual harassment. I hadn't named anybody, not even directly or indirectly. I had just merely done a tweet about sexual harassment. This had apparently upset my perpetrator. That then developed into a pattern of behaviour where any time I would tweet anything about sexual harassment, I would get phone calls telling me I needed to delete my tweets and in fact that I should delete my entire Twitter account. This harassment got so bad that I approached Northumbria Police for help. Northumbria Police wrote to the General Secretary on the 4th of March 2023 telling him about how much distress it was causing me to be receiving these malicious communications from my perpetrator that there was potentially going to be an investigation into it and asking him to safeguard me from this abuse. Instead, Gary Smith decided to ignore Northumbria police and continue to harass me around my social media. In April, the General Secretary told me that my perpetrator was planning on targeting me at my work conference in Brighton for GMB Congress. I again spoke to the police, who gave me information about the National Centre for Domestic Violence. The National Centre for Domestic Violence wrote to me and told me that they could help me secure a non-molestation order against my perpetrator. They just needed to get statements from the General Secretary about the fact that I was being threatened at this work conference. When I asked the General Secretary to help me with this, he refused. I then went and sought legal advice. I asked the General Secretary for a stress risk assessment to be done for me. 
in advance of the conference. I also wrote an email outlining my security fears and worries that was sent on May 3rd to Gary Smith and Barbara Plant. I just wanted help to make me feel safe at my work conference. Despite this, absolutely nothing was done or put in place to help support or protect me or safeguard me in any way whatsoever. So in an attempt to try and protect myself, I wrote my perpetrator an email on June 4th with a cease and desist letter. I was then contacted by the police who said that they were looking at opening a potential case on the grounds of rape by my perpetrator. And I initially agreed to cooperate with this. But on August, in August, my best friend from home died, and I didn't feel like I had the strength any longer to proceed, so I, I wrote to the police and withdrew from that case. I was really hoping that everything would just go away. In September 2023, the following month, I was told by a member of the CEC that Gary Smith, the General Secretary, had told him that he was still angry at me and still harbored ill will towards me. At the end of November, I raised a concern with the General Secretary over cronyism and the misapplication of our job valuation scheme. A few days later, I was suspended from work. Within an hour of being suspended, I was phoned up by a man on the senior management team, essentially telling me that I could just name my price. The following day, he phoned me again, asking me to just name my price for how much I wanted to leave, and that it didn't matter what I did. Even if I disproved all the allegations against me, I was still going to get sacked. I didn't accept their money, even though they were telling me I could essentially name my price. Because I know I'm not the only person who's being bullied. And if I accepted the checkbook, nothing will ever change until people start sharing their stories and dragging it all out into the sunlight. And I'm not willing to abandon the staff in my region or the rest of the GMB staff to this bullying toxic environment by taking a massive payout and having it all hushed up. I have subsequently received several threatening legal letters from GMB solicitors. Some have come from Knockholt Solicitors, which is the firm that dealt with the gagging clause and my settlement agreement in 2022, reminding me of my obligations to my perpetrator not to disparage him. Others have come from a solicitor's firm called Carson Rock. All are attempting to silence and gag me, and I believe other women are being silenced and gagged in GMB too. I submitted a whistleblowing complaint to the organization. I asked the national president in my whistleblowing complaint to approach the TUC for a recommendation for a barrister to deal with my complaints and with the other complaints from other women who have also come forward. Instead, I believe details of my complaints may have been shared with the people in the SMT who are the subject of my whistleblowing complaint. The barrister that has been chosen to hear my whistleblowing complaint is already engaged by the union on another case at the recommendation of Patterson and Brewer Law Firm, the law firm that the head of legal at GMB is also still a partner at. I wrote a motion with my rep, who sits on the CEC, appealing to the CEC to please bring back in Karen Monaghan so that we can have confidence and integrity around how the processes of these complaints are being dealt with. A couple of days before that meeting, three members of my region's central executive committee were suspended because they hadn't answered an email that HR had sent them over two weeks prior. At the CEC meeting, the national president, Barbara Plant, refused to have any debate on the process that she had outlined for dealing with these complaints, refused to hear the motion calling about Ian Karen Monaghan. Barbara Plant, for reasons known only to her, didn't remove staff from the meeting, which would have given a safe place for CEC members to discuss and debate the very serious issues at hand. 
instead allowed a barrister engaged by the FMT to attend the meeting and tell the Central Executive Committee that the Karen Monaghan recommendations were only guidance. There was no secret vote. There wasn't a vote taken at all. Instead, the National President tried to get ratification for her pre-planned process with a nodding of heads at the meeting. That meant that none of the people who were attending online even got a vote or an opportunity to speak. Over half of TMB's membership is women, and if we're to live up to the standards we would expect from other employers and in fact demand of other employers, we really need a root and branch review of the organisation. It's time to bring back in Karen Monaghan. I wanted to share my story because my story is not in isolation. There are other women being bullied, there are other people being bullied. There's a lot of talk in the organisation about there being a coup against the General Secretary. This couldn't be further from the truth. No one has called for the General Secretary to even be removed. What people are trying to call for is a fair, completely independent process. I believe there are grounds to investigate that the process for dealing with my whistleblowing complaint has already been corrupted and that this may be as a result of the General Secretary and his enablers on the SMT having pre-existing professional and or commercial ties to the legal counsel that is being used to advise on the cases against them. If people are worried about Karen Monaghan overseeing this whole process, then that's even more reason why she should be brought back in to advise the CC on the best way forward. No one should have anything to fear from Karen Monaghan, especially if, as Gary Smith said recently, we must remain true to Monaghan. People need to ask, why is the CEC being strong-armed not to have Karen Monaghan brought back in to have a proper look at what's been going on? People are being victimised for speaking out. I have no doubt that following this video going out, I will be bombarded with legal letters, all of which are ultimately being paid for by normal, hard-working GMB members. The people on the SMT and the General Secretary don't get to define the GMB. GMB is defined by the hundreds and thousands of decent, hard-working people who are part of our organisation. And I think they would be disgusted to find out how their money is being used to silence and abuse women. I know there are other people who would have come forward about the abuse that they are also suffering. But because of the legal process outlined by the national president for how it will be dealt with, they are way too frightened to ever do that now. That's what needs to change. You put the gun on the table, everything then gets turned into something else. I hope more women do come forward and tell their story because that's the only way that change will actually happen.